Not sure if I look like a cow or some kind of animal, but we'll go with it, we'll go with it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have been so uncertain about doing this type of video for so long because I feel like I didn't have all of the information to give you and I've been consistently tanning for a little while now, especially during lockdown. Um, so I feel like I've collected a lot of tips that I can share with you and tips that are really, really good for if you've got dry skin or if you've got any areas that tan clings to. And some of these tips you might not have heard anywhere else. So hopefully there'll be some new ones that you can pick up today. Everyone has their own way of tanning as well. However, this is my method that I find just, it, it just works for me. If you are a beginner, I would recommend using a tan with a guide colour just because you can see exactly where it is going and there's less chance of mistakes that way. If you are a daytime tanner, anything with a guide colour will transfer. I haven't found anything um, that doesn't transfer even minimally. I would say the Saint-Tropez um, Express transfers minimally and the Bondi Sands one transfers more so. Um, so anything with a guide colour will transfer, however I like to do that at night time and then I like to use gel ones during the day that don't transfer. So today we are going to talk about prep and about tanning and then over on my blog I will talk about the rest of the week, how I maintain that tan and what I do, how, how often I tan throughout the week. There are some things that I do slightly differently when I do tan throughout the week then, however this little beauty, you've probably seen it everywhere by now, but if you haven't done so, this is Lydia Elise Mill and Gordon's um, brand. This is her Glow by Lydia brand, and this is called the Independent Tanner Kit. This has been the biggest, the biggest change, but also the biggest improvement on my tanning at home. So I'll briefly talk about what is inside. Not only is the bag waterproof and black, because we know that tan goes everywhere, <laughs> but um, it's just really handy and it's slim as well. But yeah, it fits everything inside it. So mine looks a little bit, a little bit messy, but um, it's okay. I use this nearly every day, so it's fine, okay? Um, but what you get in here are the tanning tools that you need. So we're gonna start with this. So this is my day before prep. You get a glove and you get a back exfoliator. I didn't realise how bad the tan used to be on my back until I started using this in the shower. I thought, because I used to use gloves from Primark because I didn't see the point in spending lots of money on exfoliating gloves. Like, why would you? I think it's 99 pence for a few in Primark. However, this little beauty is fantastic. It doesn't scratch my skin like the Primark ones did, but it gives a really even, flawless base for your tan. So this glove is amazing. And I wasn't using something like this beforehand. I was just using the gloves on my back. Now I can reach all of the areas on my back absolutely fine. However, I obviously wasn't doing a good enough job because it was never even on my back. So this, is absolutely fabulous. You can get in all different directions. Um, my little <laughs> demonstration there. Yeah, so even if you just buy the kit for these two alone, fantastic. So in my prep, the steps that I do are shave in the shower and use the mitt to not only remove dead skin cells, but to lift up all of your hairs. Because if you're just shaving, all of those dead skin cells are going to get stuck within the razor and you're not going to get a smooth finish as if you did unless you were using this. Use this, remove the skin cells, shave, and then scrub absolutely everywhere using these. The places that I focus on, including my back now, <laughs> are my knuckles and my, I nearly call that an ankle then, <laughs> my wrist bone in the shower, because these are places that I never used to focus on before. I just thought they were extra dry. So yes, definitely these two areas. The elbows around the armpits, because I would get a little bit of build up here and the back here. Don't forget your neck, and I tend to get a little bit of build up just around my collarbone. Then also your knees, your feet, 
and your ankles. So anywhere else that you may get dry patches, make sure that you are exfoliating there, but whole body, but I really focus on those drier areas. Then the last bit of prep is I moisturize head to toe. Well, obviously not including my hair, <laughs> but um, this is a little bit discolored on the front purely because it's in my tanning bag. But this is the one that I absolutely love. And um, I do want to try the Bondi Sands one, which apparently does not affect tan, so it doesn't break down the tan. So I'd love to try that one. I believe it's only sold in Superdrug at the moment, but we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, this is the Garnier Body and it's the Intensive Seven Days. My skin is so dry and this is a savior product. So even if you just buy this, for those drier areas on your body and you don't use it anywhere else, it's worth it, I'm telling you. I think it costs about five pounds, you can get it almost anywhere and it smells beautiful as well. But on our prep day, we're going to moisturize everywhere. Then we're on to what I call day one. So prep day is the day before, then day one now, we're going on to our actual tan and I'm gonna give you some tips on how I like to apply it because it's quite specific. So the day that you are going to tan, whether you're a daytime tanner and you do this part in the morning, or whether you're a nighttime tanner, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to shower and shave again using the um, back scrubber and the glove. I then moisturize my face and just moisturize the dry areas of your body. So your knees, your ankles, actually do the whole of my foot and the whole of my hands and my elbows and my knees. What you can do is if you are extra dry is you can just do sort of in front of the armpit area here and you can go around the hairline, but I don't, don't tend to do that myself. And then you need to wait for your skin to cool down. If you don't, what I found is that if you apply tan specifically to your legs and my chest for some reason by here, um, it just goes into the pores. So I need to wait for my skin to cool down, for those pores to close back up again slightly and I don't get that speckled look. So make sure you are cool. <laughs> Go make yourself a drink, do something for half an hour, an hour until your body is cool. You have waited, your pores are closed. This is what we need to do next. If you have a dry face or if your moisturizer has sunk in, moisturize your face again. Honestly, this was a game changer for me. Tan used to cling in really weird places on my face, okay? But do this, honestly, it's amazing. Then what you're gonna to want to do is just re-moisturize those super dry areas. So what I do is just elbows, knees, hands, and the whole foot. That's where I stop here. Within here, we have a velour mitt. Velour mitts are the best thing for applying your tan with. Believe me, I've tried different mitts. It's got the waterproof lining inside. And my little tip is I only use the one side. I've been doing this for ages, but I only use the one side for tanning. And I use the back for blending. And also I use the bottom part here as an eraser. So I will show you how I do that. My tan of choice is actually Bondi Sans Aero. This one specifically in extra dark, okay? And this stuff is unlike anything I've ever used before. It's a beautiful color. The guide color is darker than what you will end up. So don't be put off with how dark it is. Um, you will turn a beautiful color in the end. And I find this slightly more olive toned than the Saint-Tropez. Saint-Tropez is a great color. And I actually have used that this week, the Express. However, I just really love this one. And this dries really, really fast as well. The texture of this is amazing. So it doesn't feel like sticky on your skin at all. It's honestly, if you haven't tried it, you need to try it. If you are using this tan though, it does dry very fast. So you need to work in small areas at a time. Don't do like your whole leg. You need to just do half a limb at a time, otherwise is dry. <laughs> so mitt is on and we're going to apply some tan to the mitt and spread this onto the lower part of the legs in circular motions. I don't do my knee yet. What I tend to do then is any excess that is on the mitt, I will spread that over the top 
of my foot. I do not go on top of my ankle bone because it's already darker. I will just go around the ankle bone. Make sure you spread your toes if you can and you go slightly in between your toes as well. If you've got it on your ankle though, you can use, as I said, the bottom of the back side of the mitt as an eraser. That's what I tend to do just to sort of buff that away. I then apply to my thighs, up to my knee and just sweep whatever is left across my knee. And that is purely because those are the drier areas of my body. The tan will cling to those areas so you do not need a lot of product there. Up my bottom and then we are on to the back. So do the other leg and then we're on to the back. Now on to the next amazing thing that you need this little kit for, okay? So I have seen back applicators before. However, this one is velour and it's fabulous. It's been in the wash a few times <laughs> uh, because I use it nearly every day. Using the mousse then, I squirt a few squirts onto the back, rub it together, and then this goes all the way up my neck. I turn it on sides as well to get in between my shoulder blades because sometimes just going back and forth across my back will leave little bits. So it's important just to flip it around and just go in different directions I find. I'll do the whole of my back like that up to my neck and then any excess, if it's put too much here, I will spread that around because you work quite quickly with the product and basically just blend in around your armpits. You don't want a lot of product around there. So once I've done my back, I then move on to my tummy with the mitt, circular motions to go all across my tummy and across my chest. And I actually take this up my neck and around the jawline gives you a little bit of a contoured jawline. It looks quite nice. And anything that is left on that side of the mitt, I, I avoid the middle of my face, okay? So my issue is that tan used to really cling here around my mouth and on my nose, like terribly. I'm not quite sure why, but the double moisturizing helps and also this trick helps. So I take this and I tend to do um, this side of my face first and here and across my head. By then there's even less on the mitt and then I take it around the rest of my face. I always avoid this area because I want that to look nice and bright anyway. After I've done my perimeter, skimmed the middle of my face if I'm looking here and I can see that that area is still a little bit dark for my liking even with the guide color I'll use the bottom back of the mitt and I will go over and I will just remove that. We're then on to arms and I bet the bet that you're most excited for is the hands okay but I've got tips for that as well so make sure you've really blended around your armpit I don't know about other people, I used to tan into my armpits. I don't anymore because I don't catch the sun there, okay? <laughs> so I'm trying to make this look as natural as I can. So I've blended around the armpit, haven't used extra product there. Then, some more on the mitt, I'm going to go over the shoulder, down the whole of the arm. I'm doing the top part first, then around the rest of the arm, and I'm avoiding the elbow. On me, my elbows are darker in colour anyway, and I quite like them to look almost seamless, so I do not go over the elbow at all. If you do, obviously, you can either blend or you can erase using the bottom of the mitt. I tend to use the most part of the tan on the tops of my arms, where you would naturally tan, and then underneath I'll use the residue because I'm naturally lighter there when I tan, so it tends to look more natural. Okay, important hand steps. If your moisturizer has come off of your hands and is mostly inside of the mitt, then what you need to do is you need to moisturize your hands again. Then a tiny squirt onto the back of the mitt. And I do just this area here. So the back of my hand, I don't touch any of my knuckles, but I just do the backs of both of my hands. I tend to do that one and I hold the mitt like this then to do the other side because I don't wanna put my hand back inside the mitt. What I do then is I will skim across my fingers and my thumbs and make sure that I'm using the mitt to go in between because you don't want to have harsh lines if you've left your fingers together. Best thing here about using a guide colour is you can see if everything is blended. So make sure you're using the back of your mitt to really blend all of those edges of tan and remove the tan then using the back bottom of the mitt from your wrist bone from this part 
part here, so the padding of your thumb and also from your palms of your hands. The final step then that I do purely to stop the tan sticking to just my knuckles is I get a small bit of moisturiser and I just run it across all of my knuckles and then what you want to do is you want to have a towel handy so that you can wipe away the residue that you've just put on your fingers. I will say though sometimes I don't have a towel handy and I've just got my headband on so I just wipe it on my headband because it's there and it's easy. <laughs> If you only want to do a single layer of tan, you can press fast forward here, okay, and I'll tell you when to pick it up again, but I tend to do a double layer of tan when I'm using the Bondi Sands Aero Express mousse. And the reason that I do this, it gives you a deeper color, you only need to wait 30 minutes, and then you can apply your second layer, and it just looks lovely. And also, there are some like contouring tricks that you can do, and I don't mean like giving yourself abs or anything like that but what I tend to do is I tend to apply the tan on areas I kind of I do whole body but I apply less on areas that my body is least likely to tan so for example I'd do that whole process again without adding more moisturizer I'd go lighter on my feet on the insides of my arms. I only do this section of my hands. I don't reapply to my fingers. And then I only apply it to the contours of my face. So for example, I'll just do here and around this section of my face and make sure it's blended and it gives a really lovely contoured look. So if you've done one layer of tan or if you've done two layers of tan, after about an hour, this is what you need to do. You need to moisturize your hands again. It makes everything kind of blend a bit more, I find. And then after a few hours time, you can totally wash your hands and you've got such a beautiful blended look on your hands with no horrible, overly tanned knuckles or anything. It just looks great. So it's just basically adding more moisturizer less tan in those areas and then washing your hands a few hours later. I personally then wear this to bed and I wash off in the morning but obviously you can wear this all day if you'd like but like I said you will get some transfer onto your clothes and then this is what I use to maintain. I will do a blog post on this and I will list all of the tips from today so if you haven't taken notes you can go over there and have a little look but love this bronzing gel from Saint Tropez. This is really lovely and glowy on your skin along with the purity face mist as well i really need a new one of these because i don't know what's happened to this one it's not looking so great so if you're interested in knowing how i maintain a tan now throughout the week then i will leave that linked below finally if you just want to see if you haven't done so yet if you want to see the inside of the bag you have got the elasticated sections at the back where you can keep your products this section here you've got a section at the front where your scrubbing items and things go and then there is a zipped pouch at the front as well so if your things are wet you can place them in there hopefully you have picked up some more tips today please let me know if you try anything and if they work for you or if you've got a different tip please leave that in the comment section because i would love to improve my tan even further, as would we all. So yeah, leave your comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button, please, because it means a lot to me here. Have a lovely, lovely day, and I will see you in the next one.